Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Passing Money Plan. Uh, today, we're going to talk about something other than passing money. We're going to talk about uh, how to obtain a rental, how to obtain a rental to live in. So, for people that's out there looking for rentals, and especially a market that's heavily tight on rental properties, you know, this is just a video to give you insight on what to do to convince the landlord to rent the property to you instead of renting the property to somebody else. With all that being said, Alex, you got anything to say before I go dive into this? Um, I wouldn't necessarily have much experience on this, to be honest. Um, all I can think of is uh, the best avenue that someone would have is looking for uh, a rental space that is owned by, like, as we say, mom and pop investors. Um, someone who you know, has a couple units or has some rooms available. Um, and especially I know just from, you know, saying just in the workspace, uh, you'd probably be surprised that, you know, just asking around how many people are actually uh, interested in the rental space that maybe they own a home and they live alone and they're actually willing to rent out the rooms and such. I've encountered several people. Um, I think, the landlord space is a little bit more popular now. So a lot of people are trying to look for those avenues to make more money. And, um, you know, it just depends, you know, and we've said this before, sometimes, you know, if you're in need of a place to stay, if you're in need to save money, those are some uh, lifestyle sacrifices you have to make living or rooming with other people um, or right. living in a, maybe an outdated uh, apartment that's just necessary if it's something you actually need um but that's pretty much all i got on that yeah and and the thing is is so most and alex you're 100 correct the mom and pop landlord and what what we mean about mom and pop landlord we're meaning about the mom and pop landlord is the person who owns the property that's doing all the uh vetting of tenants doing all the maintenance doing everything their self um, so most of these mom and pop landlords, they don't have the means, uh, opportunities and operations to do thorough, thorough background checks and things like that. Or if they do, if they do have the means and opportunities to do it, it's well, they don't want to do it on multiple, you know, multiple tenants. So just using Zillow, for instance, when people put their property on Zillow and, their mom and pop, you usually see that the owner's name is at the bottom of it. You you won't see a property manager's name. You'll see owner, their name, yada, yada, yada. So when you're out there filling out the application, the things you want to do, you want to say the things on the application that landlords want to hear. So for example, you want to say that the, the down payment, the down payment, the first month's deposit, the first month, uh, the first month rent, last month rent, all that is no issue. You want to let them know that you're serious about it by putting something in transcribes of, hey, I've been looking for a property for a minute. I've been doing a lot of applications and I just want to do this. The money is not a problem. I can pass a background check, yada, yada, yada. And, and the reason why I'm telling you this is because I've just used this method myself, looking for a family member, a place. And everybody that's I mean, in my area, the rental market is stupid high. The median, the median is about, let's say, fifteen hundred. And the family member they want to pay fifteen hundred dollars a month for, you know, a one bedroom. So I just, you know, kept just working the system, working the system, working the system, and then I found a price that was, uh, in my realm. But I as soon as I saw the price show up on my uh, phone that say this place was for rent, I knew it was going to be hundreds of people that was trying to apply for this place. So what I did was when I went, so the first day I seen it, as soon as I seen the price, I said, it's going to be too many people. I'm not going to waste my time. Then the second day I went and filled out the application, but then it leaves a place for notes to leave something for the owner to let them know. And then I said, Hey, you know, I've been looking for a place. I've been applying for places and you know, money is not the problem. It's the fact that, you know, it's a long list of people. And then I put a couple more words in there, just letting them know, like, 
I am a landlord friendly tenant, meaning I'm not going to be the one to sit in there calling you in the middle of the night. I just, you know, want a place to stay. I'm going to pay my rent. You know, I'm I'm an introvert. I ain't, you know, we ain't gonna be no parties or nothing like that. Saying that's all landlords want to hear. And then so I sent the I sent the uh application off. And then the funny thing, I I honestly I did not expect because of the demand that it will be on that property, I did not expect the landlord to reach back out to me. And then two days later, I kept keeping track of it. I've seen how many applications, how many people were viewing it. And then I didn't think the landlord was going to reach out to me. And then lo and behold, a day later, the landlord reached out to me and he said, your application really stuck out to me. And then I was thinking to myself, like, oh, yeah, you know, because I, I knew I said everything that he wanted to hear. And then and then after that, it was streamlined, filled out the lease, paid the money. And then the movie in date is in a couple of days. And that's all it takes. But stop thinking that, oh, I'm just going to fill out applications that a landlord, unless they're in need or they have, you know, they're really stressing and behind on their behind on their payments, you know, mortgage payments, and stuff like that. They're not trying to, oh, can I pay you a five hundred dollars here and five hundred dollars there? Get yourself an order and then say the things that they need to hear to get yourself into a place. And that's really how that's the that's the hat to get around, you know, especially in a high rental demand area, you know, especially if you're doing something on Zillow or uh, Realtor.com, you can, you know, send messages to the landlord, especially mom and pops that will say the things that intrigue them to be like, all right, forget all these other applications. I want to talk to this person. And that's all I did. And it worked out perfectly. Yeah, I I agree. Um, I see one thing I hear a lot, and I'm sure you've heard this too, is like, you know, people will say like, oh, I pay my rent. I can do whatever I want. Like, and so, but you have to go into the mindset, like, especially like, like I said, like, if you're someone that needs a place to rent, if you actually need mm -hmm. a home, uh, you're in a different scenario. You need to abide by what the landlord expects of the tenants. Yes, there's a transaction going on where you're paying him rent. He's allowing you a place to stay. But at the same time, that landlord, he or her, or yeah, he or her, her is the owner of that property. And you have to respect that that is theirs that is not yours you are paying for the privilege to stay and sleep and have a home there but you know i've had uh i had one person one time i wasn't even advertising my house for sale this is just someone that knew me and they were like oh you got a room for rent this person i don't even talk to them i just knew them and this person is someone that does drugs that has parties all the time I'm like there's no way i'm allowing you in my house and i'm not even in need but if i was I still wouldn't go with that person because of what they're involved with. You know, that's just, sure. those are just problems waiting to happen. Um, and that, and that's not, that's just, that's even above uh, just renting out a room, you know, but it's, if you had like a single unit property, you wouldn't want someone throwing parties and doing drugs in your house either, you know? So you as a tenant, you want to make sure you are showing the landlord that you are just there to, have a place to stay, have a home. And yeah, an introvert personality is probably more attractive <laughs> to Correct. to a landlord. But yeah, you do not want to sound like a threat to the landlord saying, oh, I pay my rent. I could do this, do that. Like, that's just, that's going to keep you homeless. And and you said it perfectly. Being an introvert is what landlords look for. Because the landlords, you look at it, stop. Everybody want to look at it is from... Oh, I have the money. I can do it. Start looking at what is the landlord looking for? Landlords are looking for people that will not cause problems. Landlords are looking for people that's not going to call them at, you know, 10, 11, 12 o'clock at night and be bugging them about different things. If stuff is actually wrong, then that's actually wrong. But they're not looking for the people that's, you know, sitting there calling them constantly, constantly on end, who's having parties. They just want somebody to live, go to work, come home, go to work, come home, rent to repeat 365. And if you want to stay there at the end of the year lease, let's do it again. They're not looking for all these extra headaches. They're not looking for the barbecue cookouts. They're not looking for the block club events. They're not looking for any of that. They're not looking for the baby mama drama. They're not looking for anything. And I'm going to tell a secret to uh, men out there. Men out there. And I know there's a thing out there that says 
that you cannot discriminate between because of sex, race, or uh, sexuality and all that. For single men out there, single men are the worst people, landlords think are the worst people to rent to. And it's the reason why. The baby mama drama, the having girls in and out creating drama, that is a problem. So, I mean, I'm just telling you straight up from the front lines that Single men are the worst people because they're going to have the, the parties, the keggers, everybody going to come over, they're going to have their drunk friends and all that, come and tearing up stuff. Single men are the, the ones that real estate, I mean, especially mom and pop landlords, don't want to deal with. People don't want to deal with them anyway. But in general, because only thing they see is problems coming with them. So if you want... So you have to be able to articulate to the landlord, hey, this is who I am. And be the person you say that you're going to be. I'm just coming here. I need a place to work. I remember a guy reached out to me for a property I have in Georgia. Single male. And he and he did it perfectly. I mean, I thought it was a, must have been a real estate investor in his family. He said, look, I'm a, I'm a, a guy recently divorced. You know, I have my daughter. I have my daughter and we share custody, blah, blah, blah. I work five minutes away from where this location is. Only thing I do is work, you know, take care of my daughter on the weekends. And and then that's it. It ain't going to be none of this extra party and stuff. You know, only thing I care about is the security of my daughter when she's there and move on and so forth. He jumped to the front of my line. He jumped to the front of my line. And I said, OK. And, it, and I had a list. I had a list of people. But he jumped to the front because he said the words that stuck out to me. It's. You have to be, but you can't just say the words. You have to be the person that you say is going to be. Because if you're not, if you're causing drama, you got girls running in and out, and I'm talking about single males and whatever, but you have girls running in and out and you having drama, windows getting busted out, cars and all that stuff. This lease is going to be over fairly soon because they're not going to renew the lease because you're causing too much drama. All the time you call to, call to the landlord, you're taking time away from them and their family and what they're doing to deal with you. Once you cause problems, you become a problem, you will be replaced. So just words to the wise. Exactly. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Um, both of my tenants, uh, and I've mentioned this before, uh, I, they're old. And I, I think older people are the key to tenants. Um, you know, they, they're so chill, no problems. One of them is more middle age. Um, but, you know, any issues, let's say that, like, it's it's interesting because there could be if there's any issue the weird thing is he'll like he'll be like do you need me to pay for it i'm like if if it's something that's my you know that's on me i'm like no i'll you know i'll cover it um but he's willing to you know like if he wanted to change out the toilets he was like i'll pay for it can you just have someone come and switch them out i was like sure if you want to change the toilets no problem whatever but um the other guy he's he's a single male but he's like in his late 60s 70s so um, yeah. you know, some someone like that you know i'm not expecting to be throwing parties and all of that um but yeah you have to go into it with the mentality of you know respecting the landlord you know and if you do respect the landlord the landlord's not going to give you any issues um you know so you want to you just want to keep that in mind when when you are a tenant yep yeah. With all that being said, please like, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video. Y'all have a good one. See you.